Hi guys, so off we go with the second tutorial part two actually of the uh, components and variants. If you haven't seen part one, I suggest you do just maybe uh, to get more context to this uh, tutorial. Of course, you are most, more than welcome uh, or most welcome to stay and watch it and complete the other one uh, after that so that's okay but i'm just suggesting uh and let's get to it as all youtubers say with no further ado let's jump in <laughs> okay so actually to give a little context um i started with this dude uh at the at the first tutorial but i actually didn't do anything with it because um it, yeah, it became kind of like a very long tutorial and I said, okay, if I'm going to go with this guy, so it's going to take a, a lot of time or much more time than it already was. So let's go with it now and uh, just to show uh, a few uh, more possibilities of creating variants. So I have this kind of like cute uh, illustration that I did uh, of a dude, as you see. Now... I want to create uh, more variants to the hat that he's wearing and the glasses. So let's see how we do that. Right now, it's just a group of elements, which uh, which is uh, well, there's nothing special about that. I'm gonna copy this one and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna paste it here. So we have the hat of the dude. And uh, this hat is a group. I've been hearing a lot of sounds lately saying uh, stop using groups, use only frames, blah, 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 etc., etc. That's okay uh, to use groups. It depends if you do want uh, a responsive behavior on your elements or not. Uh, you can always change it easily to a frame if you want. I'm just pointing it out. Uh, I don't see any reason to be fanatic about it. I think that when you build elements, you just need to know what is the purpose of them, what is going to, what are you going to do with them, and uh, if you think that you are going to use a responsive behavior, meaning stretching and you know having elements moving uh, to the sides or staying in the middle or growing with the frame, etc., etc. So do it a frame. If it's just a group of elements which you're not going to uh, do anything more than may maybe make it bigger or smaller, I think it's okay to use a group. And again, no stress about it, at least from my side. This is how I do my designs, and that's okay. By the way, if I will turn uh, the hat into a component, notice that now is a group. If I will turn it into a, into a component... You see, it cancels the group, if you look here, and the group became a frame, because a component is a frame, uh, so anyway, if you will turn it into a component, it doesn't really matter. Of course, as in my other tutorials, you can see uh, the tutorial about constraints and auto layout, and of course, uh, always better, usually, let's say, not, not always, again, correcting myself, usually better to use frames, but again, depends on the case and what exactly you need. For illustrations, to use groups, that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. So don't get too kind of like freaky and fanatic about it. <laughs> that's okay. Um, anyway, let's continue from here. So I turned this hat into a component by the way if i'll control z or command z on your mac i can just duplicate i want to do now more colors to this dude's hat so i can just duplicate it okay i will call this one red i will call this one you know what Actually, I can do it even later. It doesn't matter that much. Um, I'll show you another way to do it, actually. No, you know what? Yeah, let's do it like that. Or 
Yeah, that's okay. I'm gonna use a uh, just a click to make it a component, and here I can create a variant. When I click that, add a new variant, then it just creates another variant. Now I will give this variant a name of blue, and this variant I will give a name of red, and I will duplicate it. I can add another variant, by the way, from here, just clicking the plus, or I can just control or command D, and it will add another variant, which is perfectly okay, and I will call this one green. Now, of course, I don't see any, any uh, difference in these hats because I haven't done any differences yet, so now I need to do them. Now, uh, taking the blue hat, of course, I will change its color to blue. This is okay, and I will take this uh, bottom uh, part of the hat and make it a bit uh, more dark, and I will do this one green, as I wrote, not this terrible green, but this green is okay, I think, and this one, I will make it a bit darker, and good, I have my three variants, and I can just copy, okay, I will deal with these ones, uh, I will show it uh, in a minute, so copy, clicking on this one, and paste to replace. Great, so now if I am, I'm gonna put the, the dude actually on a frame that we can see the variants. No, actually I can see them from here. That's okay. So look at that. We have now, um, we have now uh, the three variants of the hat for this dude. Red, blue, and green. Great, works perfect. That looks perfect. Okay, now what we can do with variants, okay, we can add if we want just more variants to this list. I can add, let's say, three more hats, uh, let's say without a symbol, just plain hats if I want to, or I can add the plain hat as a, another property, okay? If you notice here, you see there is a property one, meaning property, I can do it like property one of this hat will be the color, okay? I can do property two, um, let's say no symbol. Symbol, I mean this thing here, okay? Now, of course, it's not created automatically. I need to do these variants like, this is the main show, and this is behind the scenes, okay? We have to prepare behind the scenes that the main show will work as we want it to work. So what I can do here, I can, I can just uh, um, make this one wider. I will take, sorry, okay, I will choose, select, sorry, these three uh, hats, and I will just drag another three to here okay now see what i can do first of all i'm going to delete the symbol from this hat so we have three plain hats now we have them in names variant four variant five and variant of course six now see what i'm doing now i'm gonna choose, uh, select this one, okay, the hat, and from here, from this menu, by the way, these are all the properties that we have for this hat right now, but I'm gonna add new property. I'm gonna call this property no symbol. Okay, now I'm gonna select this hat, okay, I'm going to call it property one red. Now see here that it said, it tells me that there is a conflict because right now there is this hat and this hat with the same name and properties, meaning there is a conflict between both of them. We're going to change that in a second. Now 
no symbol now it's a default no symbol what i'm gonna do now is give it another one another actual name to this uh, property no symbol so this hat is red and no symbol this hat is red no symbol is a default meaning the default for me right now is with a symbol you can name it as you want okay as fits in your design system designs whatever you want to do and what just do whatever you need in your designs and that's perfectly okay i'm just name, naming it now as i see right to name it i'm gonna choose the blue one and again put here no symbol and i'm gonna call it blue because it's a blue with no symbol same for the green again if i will put the green here it will give me that conflict oh what did I write here? B -b Green. Okay, it's not what I meant to write here. So now it's going to give me the conflict again because this one and this one have the same names. Okay, so I'm going to change it now. No symbol. So we are working to create behind the scenes. And now if we go back to our dude and I'm going to double click and select the hat. So look what we have now. We have now property one and we have another property which is called no symbol actually i can call it property two or give this one here i can call this property actually let's call it color which makes more sense let's call it color yeah okay so this is good and now if we go back to our dude hey make it easy there Okay, so double click on the hat. So we have red default and red no symbol. Boom, nice. And now uh, I can change the color blue. And if I want it as a default, meaning with a symbol, I have it now with a symbol. So you see, I'm playing with the properties. Actually, again, I can either make them all in one big list, meaning blue and another one in this list blue no symbol i can have them listed just six uh variants uh in a in a long list or i mean six not that long but anyway i can just make them in one list or i can split them for two properties if it's more comfortable for me to use now of course that you can add more and more properties um again depends on the case depends on the need of your designs of your design system etc and so on um i'm usually i'm trying not to make it over complicated because then you kind of get lost there um i prefer sometimes to just split to more components with variants okay then having them like as let's say one uh let's say one uh component with like i don't know a million properties so but again you are free to do of course whatever you want and need as uh you need in your designs and that's perfectly okay i'm just showing you the logic of how that works i can add another property here like let's say um um you know what let's do another one now and just i will hey I will take these, sorry, I will take uh, these three, let's say, and I will duplicate and put here another three. And let's say that now uh, I want to have all these uh, hats, for example, with a black bottom part. That's okay. So I'm going to do another variant like this okay and now i can do the same as i did and add another property and i will call it black bottom okay and now i'm gonna call this one i will give it a it's a red default and i will give this one a black bottom 
I should just copy and paste it, but I'm choosing to work hard. <laughs> okay, that's copy and that's a paste. And there we go. So now if I go back to my beautiful dude, so I have here a default or black bottom. You see, I can easily change it red and I can have it here. No symbol, but now when I change to no symbol, okay, there is no variant, no symbol with a black bottom. If I do want to have another property, black symbol, uh, sorry, <laughs> got it all mixed, black bottom and no symbol, then I need to add another variant like that. It doesn't kind of like automatically creates it. Okay, so that must be understood. Again, showing you the logic of exactly how it works. And if I will choose here, uh, let's say a red but a black bottom, so the symbol will come back. Why? Because again, because the black bottom right now, uh, the hat with the black bottom part has a symbol. I can create another three, which is just a black bottom with no symbol. And then I can have it all kind of like have all the options there. Okay. Again, so I'm, I show you the, um, the logic of creating uh, properties. And of course, if I want to have other variants to this dude, then I can just, let's say, copy his glasses. I will take them here and of course I can do like that. Uh, Figma gave another, uh, another possibility to uh, create a component with a set of variants in one click. I will show it right now. Okay, so I am duplicating this one and glasses i will call them glasses slash red now naming let's talk for a second about the naming or not for a second for let's say a minute about the naming when i'm using a slash i don't know if i mentioned it in the first tutorial maybe i did maybe i'm repeating myself could be but it doesn't hurt to mention it again when I'm given a name as glasses slash red and I will give them all at the first name with will be glasses and a slash. So it will take the first name before the slash and make it the name of the component. Of course, I can give it just names like red, black, green and make and like uh, combine them as variants and give the component a name after I create the variants. That's also okay. But if you want to work kind of like more uh, precise, uh, then that's a way to do it. Well, it's not red, by the way, it's blue. <laughs> I don't know why I called it red, maybe because of the hats. And this one I will make actually red. Let's give it a red fill. And this will be red. No, right? It's kind of like, yeah, red. Ah, you know what? Red is okay. Let's give it like this kind of red. <laughs> That's okay. Um, let me take this color and give it to the other one as well. Okay. So these will be glasses and slash red. Now it's good. And let's give it green. That's like we did with the hats. We can have like kind of like a, a sets of hat and glasses, which is okay. So glasses slash green, and I will give it now a green color. Let's do it like that, more or less like we did with the hats. Yeah, let's do it like this. I think it's okay. Copy and paste. And there we go. Now, look what happens here. I have this frame, this frame, and this frame. Okay, I'm gonna select them all. And here with one click, create component set. I click on it, boom. What it did is it actually created the component with the first name, as I mentioned, glasses. Okay, that was the name before the slash. And I have these three variants of 
blue, red, and green already here. Great. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to copy this one, Control or Command C. I'm going to double click on these glasses, right click and paste to replace. Boom. Now I have this component here. Now I can change these glasses blue, green and red. Perfect. Look how it fits great actually with the red hat and the black uh, frame and the black bottom of the hat. It looks just perfect. Nice dude. And now he's going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyway, so we got it with our dude finished. Okay, this is what I wanted to show with the dude and uh, looks great. Uh, something else that I wanted to show actually is another way of doing variants or another, let's say, possibility to use variants in design systems. Of course, I'm showing a very small uh, variation here, but that's okay. Uh, let's say that I'm, I have like different kinds of notifications or for, a, let's say, a mobile application. So I can put them all actually in one, uh, as one uh, component, which will be called, let's say, notifications, okay, as I did here. And let me show you. So I'm selecting them all together. And here I'm clicking on create component set. Now I have all these components um, together under the name of notifications. And here I have the different kind of notifications that I can use in my design of a mobile app. Let's say that I'm going to take this screen. I will give it, uh, this is from the part one tutorial, the screens that I have here. So if you're wondering, like, what is it doing here? So yeah, this is from part one. If you saw it, great. If you didn't, so you can definitely go and see uh, the part one tutorial. And I'm going to give it just kind of a background for us to see it. I'll give it kind of like a pinkish background. Yeah, pink is okay. Maybe more like a fuchsia. Eh, doesn't matter. Okay, this is good. So if I want to see what kind of notifications I can use, what do I have in my design system? Of course, that I can easily add more and more. I can hold as many notifications as I want in this variant. The thing is, what is great about that is that copy and paste. I'm putting the notification here. And let's say that copy. And I'm going to have another page, for example, which here I want to do some more designs. The thing is that this is using the backstage, which is this. Okay, I don't have to each time go back and see uh, which kind of notifications I have in my design system because I have them, if I choose this component, I have them all listed here so I can easily just change and of course I mean I can place each notification in the right place where it should be on the screen and let's say if I choose a top uh, something like that so okay it changed to, it changed to this notification I can just place it where it should be okay and I can easily just choose another one for each screen and situation if I'll just duplicate the screen and I want here let's say kind of like the snack bar notification I call it just a quick pop-up I'm calling it more of a let's say conventional name so it can just be another notification that I can use here or here depends on the flow and on the case of my application okay but I can easily just duplicate another screen and so on and just use any notification that I want, need. Uh, the only thing that bothers me actually, which I don't like that much, which I saw it already a few times, it is, you see, that it kind of like uh, truncates the name here, which is 
kind of annoying, honestly. Uh, the variant is missing one or more properties. Okay, it doesn't matter right now. Um, but no, ah, no closing icon. Okay, so I did another uh, property to this one, but I didn't give it to the other ones. Okay, anyway, but this actually bothers me. Okay, I think it should be fixed, uh, or I don't know exactly what's up with that. Anyway, so variants. Um, let's go back to this page. And the last thing I'm going to show is actually uh, a bottom navigation bar for a mobile application. So let's see how it goes. I have all these uh, icons here that I made actually for this tutorial yeah i don't think it's the one it's yeah i made it for this tutorial uh i didn't use them before if i'm not wrong no i didn't yeah now i remember yes i did them for this tutorial which is good okay um and i'm gonna place them let's do like that i am gonna yeah I'm gonna do something like this. Okay, I have them with uh, properly, I, mean, I have them uh, properly named. Let me see, favorite selected, personal selected. Ah, okay, I have them selected and not selected. I'm just kind of like getting a second, uh, getting into it because I made them the last time I made the tutorial, which was like a week ago. So I didn't remember exactly what I did here. So now I got it. Okay, good. Now I can create a component set, boom. Great. So I have them all. You see, I didn't give them like a first name to use. So I'm going to call this, let's say, bottom nav icons. Okay, good. And uh, I'm going to use them easily on a uh, bottom navigation bar for my application. So let's go ahead and create that bottom navigation bar with all these uh, with the actually with the components that have these uh, the same component have all the, these variants of default and selected states and uh, let's see how we can easily um, and quickly create that navigation bar so I'm doing a frame here uh, I'll give it a height of uh, 65 I think that's good 375 of width that is great width of our screen i'll put it on the bottom of the screen i'll give it a kind of like an upper shadow or shadow like in the top part here i will give it a minus three uh, 16 pixels spread uh, blur sorry and kind of i think um i 16 opacity yeah that's good okay now I'm gonna take actually one of them it doesn't matter you will see in a minute why it doesn't matter I'm just gonna drag one into this frame and put it here okay and then I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna make it an auto layout auto layout shift a this tutorial doesn't cover the auto layout, but you are definitely most and very welcome uh, to see my tutorial about auto layout and understand how to create, actually to build or do what I'm doing here now, uh, very easy, okay? So I'm gonna just double click on this one and we need five of them. So I'm gonna just duplicate it and I'm going to give this auto layout the width of my screen. Another thing I'm going to do is move it from packed, which are elements one after the other. I'm going to give it a space between, which is going to distribute them evenly inside this auto layout. By the way, it is completely responsive. Okay, auto layout, great. Now we're gonna do that. Let's say that's a 64. Uh, yeah, that's okay. And I am gonna change them now to what we need. Okay, I'm gonna double click this one. I have here 
videos i'm gonna put it on home and this one i'm gonna change to personal this one to um favorites and to music look how easily we did that okay more than that each page that i will design each page in my application uh, i need to have the selected state of you know the page that i am on for example if i open my application and i'm on my home page so i can just choose from here we have a property tool of selected and now i can use the selected state if i'm on the favorites page for example so i can choose here selected i can move this one to default and there we go you see how easily we can just uh, play with it uh, or actually not play but place on our screens easily after cre we created the variants uh, everything that we need and again if we need more states or more variants to the to these component this component actually it's all a one component by the way it's bottom nav icons they are all combined in one component so we can just do this one select it grow this uh, variance area duplicate and create more variants if we need to easily and then they will all be presented on our screens here okay um so i think that we kind of covered everything that i wanted to um yeah these are the ones we did on the last tutorial so i guess that that's it for now guys um thank you for watching my tutorial uh, and being interested in it i hope uh, you learned from it um and of course i will be very happy if you're gonna do a like if you will subscribe to my channel and uh, of course uh, if you have kind of requests if you want me to do a tutorial specifically about something just write to me in the comments and i will be more than happy to uh, make a tutorial on whatever you guys need uh, or want to learn and know. Thank you so much and bye for now. See you in the next tutorial. Thank you.